Ever wondered if you could survive losing most of your body with no medical help while still eating, trying to move, and keep going for months? Well, it seems possible if you're a fish. It's also quite possible to stay alive even without a head if you're a fly, or become a living head without a body if you're a snake, or lose almost all your insides but continue to lead a normal life if you're a cicada. Why don't we grab something to eat instead of having coffee? stick with coffee. Make sure you watch the entire video. There's always some awesome breaking news in the end. Yes, it's a fish. And yeah, it's alive. Despite literally missing half of its body, the fish is still breathing. Actually, it's even trying to move. This poor creature was rescued from a Thai market. And the most amazing thing is that the fish not only survived such serious injuries, but also kept living for six months after that, without half of its body and tail. Apparently, this fish from the Cyprinid family lost its tail after trying to escape from the cement pond. How? Well, in its attempt to escape, the fish broke its bones, causing the tail and half of its scales to simply rot and fall off. But the real question is, how did the fish manage to stay alive for six months? Well, first of all, the creature was lucky it was a fish. Since fish are cold-blooded, their bodies don't need much oxygen. The low temperature allows tissues like the brain, nerves, and muscles to function even in a critical state, and it also slows down the rotting process. Apparently, there were enough organs in the part of the fish's body that was left for the animal to survive for a while longer. Moreover, all these six months, the fish was taken around villages by its rescuer as a weird exhibit. By the way, a similar fish but with even more frightening injuries was filmed in the Maldives. So this is not an isolated case. Fish can handle critical injuries. And it's also not necessarily about missing half of the body. Green sawfish are known for their unique noses, or rather long, flat growths on their snouts. These growths are covered with teeth on the sides. These teeth are used by sawfish to cut their prey. The sawfish population is dwindling because of their distinctive saw, Poachers catch sawfish to remove them, leaving the animals to die because surviving with such a wound becomes virtually impossible. Besides the bleeding, sawfish are also unable to hunt. With the help of their noses, they not only cut up the prey, but also detect the electrical impulses of their soon-to-be dinner. However, researchers once spent 75 days following an amputee green sawfish that lived without a nose. And although its behavior was erratic, you can only imagine how resilient you have to be to deal with that kind of injury. But the most amazing example is the head of a wasp. You see that, right? It's just a head with no body, and it's eating a banana. Until the head dies, it continues to function as if the body is still there. Why? Well, at least because the head can't turn around and see what's going on back there, so it's quite possible that the insect doesn't even realize what happened. But it's not just that the head may not have the slightest idea of what has happened to the body. The wasp's head also secretes hormones that signal the body that it's time to eat. So it turns out that the head triggers the hormones, and if food appears right under the insect's mandible, it certainly has to be eaten. And it doesn't matter that there's literally no place to put that food in. This can go on forever. There's no body, so the signal to stop eating just doesn't reach the brain. And here's a headless wasp that not only moves, but is also trying to take its severed head with it? Whoa! The Asian giant hornet has only its head and front legs remaining, but surprisingly, they appear to be still alive and seemingly attempting to crawl somewhere. Moreover, the decapitated wasp grabbed the head and flew away with it. Amazing, isn't it? Actually, it's not that amazing if you know insect anatomy. For humans or any other animal, beheading is in most cases immediately fatal. It's plain and simple. However, some insects can survive in this state for a long time, provided they're well hydrated. The explanation is quite simple. They have a fundamentally different nervous system. Although wasps and hornets have a cluster of nerves in the head, these clusters are also found in other parts of the body. They can keep the insect alive for some time, even if the head is no longer there. Not for very long, of course, but there is evidence suggesting that the head and body moved separately from each other for 12 hours straight before ultimately coming to a stop. Even flies have a similar property. 
You just look at it. The fly doesn't seem to notice anything at all. With or without a head, doesn't matter. I'm still rubbing my legs. Some people think that this skill is due to the location of the fly's brain. It's somewhere in the back, which means that the head can be torn off without any consequences. Actually, the fly's brain is in the head so it can't survive for long without it. Oh, and here's an interesting fact. Flies are actively practicing decapitation of other insects. <coughs> this video clearly shows a tiny tropical fly slicing off the head of an ant and then dragging it away. And in a recent study, scientists recorded as many as three species of flies that like to do something similar. The female fly is known to use an extra long proboscis with a cutting organ at the end to surgically remove the victim's head. The fly then drags the head away and either feeds on the mucus and brain or lays an egg inside. Yes, so far scientists don't know for sure what exactly happens to the head after it's separated and whether there's any particular pattern of action. But why won't the ants resist? After all, cutting off the head is not the same as biting a leg. Well, the flies are quite adept at avoiding powerful mandible, but they also target wounded ants. But why go for the head? As horrible as it sounds, it's the perfect place for a tiny fly larva to live and develop. Now that's a different story, because here we have the head of a snake, also a severed one, and it's still alive. It turns and looks as if it's going to attack. This also happens due to physiology, this time snake physiology. Snakes are also cold-blooded creatures, and since they don't need to maintain internal temperature, snakes need less energy than warm-blooded creatures. To get energy, you need oxygen. Breathing oxygen requires lungs, and the head without a body, of course, doesn't have any. This is why a mammal dies almost immediately after losing its head. But if it's a snake, which almost doesn't need any oxygen, it can live for a few more minutes, sometimes even a few hours. Moreover, in such a state, the head of a venomous snake can be even more dangerous. It'll bite you if given the opportunity. How does the snake feel at this point? It probably doesn't realize that it no longer has a body. When it's in pain, it instinctively tries to defend itself. No time to think it through. But how can such a situation happen in the first place? I mean, when an animal loses a tail or a leg, it's clear what happens next. But when it comes to the head? In fact, no matter how creepy snakes may seem to some people, snakes themselves are hunted by quite a large number of animals. However, tearing off the head is a specific way of killing, which is used by birds of prey, such as eagles or hawks. Once they catch their prey, and it can be not only a snake, but also a fish or even another bird, the first thing they try to do is to neutralize it. That actually makes sense. No one wants to waste precious energy on fighting, so the easiest way to do is separate the head from the body. Here you can clearly see how it happens. Given how strong the beaks of birds of prey are, it's not hard to do. And then you don't have to worry the prey would bite you. Unless, of course, it's a snake. The birds of prey still throw the head away. Smart guys! Now look at this cicada. You can see that it's, to put it mildly, not in good shape. <sighs> It looks like someone's taken all the insides out of the insect and also ripped the wing off. It's just a crawling shell. But what's going on here? There are so-called periodical cicadas, insects that emerge in intervals of 13 and 17 years. After spending 17 years underground, the brood makes its way to the surface through the eastern United States to find a mate and give rise to the next generation. This is an incredibly interesting phenomenon. But what scientists and researchers are interested in is the big fungal show. It's a wild show in which a parasitic fungus sends certain cicadas into a mating frenzy, after which their, shall we say, genitalia fall off, and the abdomen, and pretty much the entire back of the body. Like the cicadas themselves, the fungal spores live patiently in the soil for 17 years, waiting for their brood to emerge. The nymphs are infected as they come into contact with the spores on their way to the surface, and then the fungus grows inside for 7 to 10 days. It has time until the host develops into an adult. It's only then that the infection begins to manifest itself, leading to dire consequences. The abdominal plates of the male slough off, exposing a white plug composed of spores of the fungus. Yes, that's right. The white substance inside the abdomen is a fungus. The spores can come off when the insect walks or flies, but are most often spread when male cicadas mate with females. Yes, it turns out that the fungus is transmitted like an STD. 
What's most amazing about all this is how the cicadas continue to function while infected. That is, after losing a third of their bodies. Under these conditions, the cicadas just go about their business, mating and flying around as if nothing had happened. Do they feel anything? And if so, is the influence of the fungus so strong that it makes them ignore the sensations? Nobody knows. Both males and females die within a few weeks of leaving the soil, right after mating. In doing so, they literally fall apart because their bodies are so worn out. But because of extreme endurance, the bodies keep moving even though they look like empty shells. Which begs the question, what's the point of such an existence anyway? It's actually very sad. Spending 17 years in the ground, then coming to the surface for a couple of weeks, leaving offspring, and then dying? Along the way, maybe letting the fungus reproduce? Not a great way to live your life. But like any other animal, cicadas are very important to nature, at every stage of their life cycles. Cicadas dig up the soil, prune trees, increase predator populations, and then return nutrients to the soil when they die. Now, I want you to take a closer look at these geese. See anything unusual? Well, visitors to Benelli Park didn't notice it right away either until they saw a goose pierced by an arrow. A couple of years ago, in the town of San Dimas, California, locals found a goose with an arrow stuck in its neck. Although the bird's neck is quite thin, the arrow didn't damage any important organs. How else would you explain the fact that the animal continued to live as if nothing had happened? Except that it became inconvenient to clean feathers, but things happen, right? Must have been the wind. And this goose is not the first one with such an injury. In 2010, a similar bird was spotted in Brooklyn, also with an arrow in its neck. Judging by the number of videos on the internet, geese have pretty tough necks. It was quite a long time before they managed to catch the California goose, but eventually the arrow came out on its own. A few weeks later, people who saw the goose noticed its wounds were healing, so the bird somehow sorted things out without any human help. Some wounds can't heal by themselves. Take this egret, for example. It eats, but the food can't reach its stomach due to a hole in its neck. This means the poor bird might starve to death without even knowing why. Only a vet can help save the egret in such situation. He'll perform surgery, stitch up the neck wound, and then the egret will need care. Hopefully, the bandage will be positioned in a way that the bird probably won't be able to take it off. By the way, there are cases when birds have managed to cope with such wounds on their own. Pigeons are especially good at it, except that they have to eat two to three times more to make up for what falls out of the neck in the process of swallowing. You have to admit, many animals simply can't do without the help of humans. Take, for example, Bunny. A dog from Mexico named Bunny lost the ability to move her hind legs after being hit by a car. It's a sad but quite common story that went viral on social media, with one commenter writing that a dog like Bunny should have her own Mercedes. And then, all of a sudden, the brand reps responded to it. Bunny now has custom wheels replacing her back legs and a Bunny Benz license plate. A postcard from the past. A resident of the American city of Portland, Maine, has received a mysterious postcard that was sent from Paris back in 1969. Once again, the postcard had been on its way for 54 years. It was addressed to the previous owners of the house who died back in 1988. Dear folks, by the time you get this, I'll have long since been home. But it just seems proper to send you this from the Tour Eiffel, where I am now. Don't have a chance to see much, but having fun, the message said. The postcard was sent on March 15, 1969 but someone put a new U.S. stamp on it with a July 12, 2023 stamp from Tallahassee, Florida. Where the message has been for 54 years is unknown. And given that this is Maine we're talking about, this could become a plot for a pretty good horror movie. Final Destination Reality If there's one thing the Final Destination movies have taught us, it's to feel anxious when a truck loaded with logs drives in front of us. Turns out an accident like that actually happened in real life. A driver on a Georgia road leaned down to pick something up and did so a second before he crashed into a truck. That saved his life. Dozens of logs formed a hole right where the driver's head was. He was not seriously injured, but it seems like we've all just had our worst fears confirmed. A woman fell in love with a chimpanzee. 
Okay, I know how that sounds. And no, it wasn't like that. A woman had been visiting the Antwerp Zoo for four years and had become very attached to a male chimpanzee named Cheetah. Whenever the woman visited, she would blow kisses to the chimp through the fence and wave her hand, and Cheetah would respond by forming a bond with her. New chimps were brought into the enclosure, but Cheetah totally avoided any contact with them. As a result, the zookeepers gave the woman a lifetime ban on visiting the zoo, which made her cry. Surprisingly, her tears did the trick. The ban was lifted, but they asked her to be more chill around the chimp so he'd feel like mingling with his kin. See you later.